Welcome. So I thought we'd go through 10 important x-rays that you should know about and be able to interpret easily in the emergency department. It's almost like a workshop, so it shouldn't take too long. Uh, again, we'll use a PowerPoint to assist us. And 30 minutes, well, probably won't be that long. I reckon it'll only be 15 to 20 minutes of sheer pleasure. Okay, <clears throat> let's start with the first one. This is a true letter. This is a letter that says, Dear Doctor, thank you for assessing this man who came up his motorbike last night. His x-ray is reported as normal, but he's still in considerable pain. Please assess and manage. Regards, Blue Square. Okay, so this is the x-ray that was done. Now, he's in significant pain. So what do you think? I'll leave you a little bit of time to contemplate it. Obviously, the AC joint there looks okay. The clavicle looks okay. I can't see any fracture through the scapula. And this looks a bit abnormal, doesn't it? The actual report said alignment of the chromoclavicular and glenohumeral joint is satisfactory. No acute fracture seen. Well, it's true there's no fracture. What is it? So it is, of course, a posterior dislocation x ray. And the posterior dislocation, I mean, the classic one is a light bulb sign. And what is it? Because it's internally rotated, the um, greater tuberosity is rotated internally and it has this sort of appearance of, you know, of a ice cream cone or a light box, of a light globe. Uh, there are a few other signs. The light bulb signs are one which most know, and it's fixed in internal rotation. So you shouldn't really miss it if you examine the patient. If they can't move their arm at all, there's something wrong. Um, a few other bits that are about 60 to 70 percent um, sensitive, but this particular x-ray doesn't have either of the two. The rim side, that is just inside here, it's more than six millimeters, and the trough side, which is a, like a reverse hill sax um, injury here, is bashed as it, as it rotates around. Um, if you get a lateral, now this is a different patient, but if you get a lateral, you'll see that the Mercedes sign, the head of it is behind it. So the head should in fact sit in the glenoid, the glenoid is positioned there of the scapula. So there you can confirm your posterior dislocation. Excellent. One of them that is still intermittently missed or at least delayed in diagnosis. Next one, number two. Dear admitting officer, that's probably gonna be you. This man was reviewed in a Queensland emergency department, unnamed, uh, with an ulnar styloid fracture. Despite a back slab, he's in a lot of pain. Could you redo the plaster and arrange, I gather, follow up? Uh, so it could be that the plaster is too tight, etc. But let's have a look at the x ray. And there is the ulnar um, avulsion styloid fracture. But this is the AP, this is the lateral. What do you notice about it? That doesn't look right, does it? It looks like the, all the carpal bones should be, so they should have a little gap like this between them. But this one, they see like they're on top of each other. This is what's called the crowded carpus view. And on the lateral, again, it doesn't seem very far between there and there, so it's all crowded and out. But what you can see is there's the lunate. It's lunate because it looks like a half moon and it's popped out, it usually sits here. So it's popped up like that, squeezed like a pip out, and this is dropped down. So this is a lunate dislocation. Now, I didn't make up this mnemonic. There's eight bones, eight carpal bones. Some lovers try positions that they can't handle. I don't particularly use it, but you might well find it useful. So these are normal carpal bones. And you can see, as I said before, that they're delineated from each other in two separate rows. And uh, and that's a scaphoid view. Look at the scaphoid bone there. So the normal one, and there's your lunate on the lateral. So you're sitting proud and above it, you can see part of the, there's the scaphoid angled across here. This is back to that x-ray we saw before. Again, showing that this is the crowded carpus. And then on the lateral, this is going off. There's your scaphoid there. It's dropped down a bit also. So the, Lunate dislocated. Now the, you hear about, this is the normal alignment on the lateral. 
there's the lunate dislocation. You hear about a transphenoid perilunate dislocation. That is where the lunate stays in position, but everything else goes back. And when you do that, because of the forces, you tend to fracture through the scaphoid bone. So you get this transscaphoid perilunate dislocation. And here's an example of it. So we look at the lateral. There's the lunate, and it's actually in position. And the rest of the carpuses have gone back. And on the way through, it's fractured through the scaphoid. Okay. Incidentally, the capitate is dislocated back. But who cares? This is the bit you see. You need to check to see if you can find the lunate on the lateral, and then the rest of it's gone back. Transcaphoid, perilunate dislocation. Nasty things. These to go to theatre to get back into position and everything screwed back together. So again, this is just showing the uh, what I was showing before about that previous X-ray. Um, so the bit which I look at, lunates in position related in relation for the perilunate dislocation, and the AP shows a crowded carpus. Shouldn't miss that one. Number three. Now this is tough. This person's got a sore ankle. I'll let you look at it for a bit, or you can pause the video and look at it. I mean, the places that you look at it from a sore ankle, it's obviously lateral malleolus, medial malleolus. You know, can I see anything fractured through here? No. It is easy to miss, and this was missed initially. And when you look closer, it's actually a mortis fracture there. Uh, now, surprisingly, this injury um, needs to get followed by orthopods and there's a CT to see how much, um, or an MRI to see how much damage is in there. People get arthritis afterwards and sometimes need to be um, uh, even operatively looked after. So worth having a really good close look at uh, your x-rays. Okay, number five, uh, this patient was stepping down a curb and did an inversion injury off a curb. Uh, and you can see that there is a base of the fifth metatarsal fracture there. Now, is it a significant fracture? Well, the trick here is that it is a significant fracture. So you can get avulsion fractures here where you suddenly pull off them and that's where Pyrenees brevis attaches and the plantar aponeurosis. They attach there and they can rip that off. Now that's not so bad. And you can put that in a, a cam boot um, or a back slab and it will it'll slowly heal. The problem with this one is that the malunion is really high. This is a Jones fracture. Jones being the most popular Welsh surname. And Jones fractures just have this real problem with it where they have a, a difficulty with the, um, with the healing. So you need to identify that, and that actually will need orthopedic review. Often they'll think about trying to screw there to hold it tightly together to hope that that'll help for the um, for it to to heal. Number six, so we're already halfway through. Number six, this lady's had a fall and actually was sent home. Now it's obviously she's got hip pain, and this should, once you know the person's got hip pain, it's a two item. If on the inside, you can follow uh, the line here and you can see that it's continuous. So they'll say, oh, well, there's no fractured hip. But in fact, if you look at the other cortis, you can see this cortex is broken. In fact, and the trabecular is broken all the way through. It just hasn't hit this cortex. <laughs> so this is a between a gardener two and a gardener three. And some people can walk on this. Lady actually walked on this for a week, represented and it displaced further and she needed a complete hip replacement. Um, so closely look at these injuries. If you really aren't sure the pace is unable to mobilize, a CT would be a reasonable thing to do. And that shows the fractured area. Number seven, lady, this um, gentleman's had a fall and this is also missed. Um, he's got this pain in his knee and what do you look at from here? Well, his patella looks okay. But here, you can see, in fact, I'll go back slightly, you can see the break in the cortex there. And it actually goes down through here. It's a tibial plateau fracture. This distance here and this distance here should be even. This is slightly more as this has dropped down, but it hasn't dropped down very far. That's why it's easy to miss. Often you'll end up with blood in the joint. This patient did have a little bit of blood in the joint um, and needed to get operative 
um, care to hold this back in position. Uh, a young patient who was um, twisted and has pain in the right hip. Now, this the left hip is normal. You can see again Sheldon's rule lines going here. That's consistent, and that's a normal looking hip. Okay, the epiphysis is normal in this age group. But on this side, there's the problem. Follow it along, jump goes down. That and that have twisted on each other. And you can see even on the outside, this goes like this and up and here, plop. And look at the distance here of the epiphysis. There it's wider and goes narrow. Here it's about the same all the way along. So this is a Sufi. This is a slipped upper femoral epiphysis. And you need to just follow the lines across and have a look at those sort of spots where you can see it opening up. Number nine, this is personal for me because I missed my own child's x-ray, which was very similar to this, following a fallen outstretched hand. Uh, the epiphysis, everything, you can't see any fracture at all with that. In the lateral, everything looks okay. Everything's in position, the lunate, scaphoid, etc. But what's happened, uh, and when you see it, it's obvious, but when initially looking for it, sometimes you can miss it. It's that. See, the epiphysis has gone whoot, that way and needs to be go to theater to get pushed back into position. Um, so that's what happened with my child. And there was no problems with development um, of that arm, although she still hates me for it. Um, so be careful of that. Number 10, this is the last one. This is um, a full on outstretched hand by an adolescent. Um, and the important part, of course, is that you can see fat pads. There's a fat pad posteriorly and a fat pad anteriorly. Now, posterior, that fat usually sits in the lecron fossa. So there must be blood in the joint that's pushed out the fat that's sitting there. And that's what you're seeing. You see the fat there. You can have a small anterior fat pad. This has been pushed out and wide, like a big sail, um, as being normal. But you never have a normal posterior fat pad sign. So what does it mean? Well. In a young person, meaning in a you know, seven, eight year old or something like that, it'll be a, um, a supracondylar fracture. It'll probably be a grade one that you've missed, it's got some blood in the joint. In an older patient, it'll be a radial head fracture, radial neck fracture, which is what we're seeing just here. Okay, and that's caused blood in the joint. And that was missed. Okay, well, anterior fat pad, as we said, may be normal if it's small. Posterior is never normal, posterior fat pad. Uh, if it's in a child, it'll be a supracondylar fracture. In adults, a radial head fracture. That's pretty easy, isn't it? Number 11. I think this is the last one. So this is a patient who was sent home following a, when they twisted their ankle. And they had a look at this and they've done um, the views that, and they can't see any fracture at all and they've referred them to the orthopedic clinic, who then said, well, this doesn't seem right. They looked lateral and that was okay. But then they did additional films and there you can see a meson nerve fracture. There is a fracture through here and the fracture line splits all the way through the interosseous membrane like this. It's actually quite a debilitating fracture and sometimes needs mesh to be to hold this back together here. Um, so when you're doing a, the examination of the ankle, remember just to check proximally around the, it's around the fibula head, just fibula neck around that area, make sure it's not tender, you haven't missed something there. Okay, I think that'll just about do, what was it, 11? 11 ones, x-rays that, um, it's just worth back going back over and making sure you don't forget them. Things like the lunate dislocation or transcaphoid perilunate um, injuries um, and some of the other ones which we've gone through. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you have any questions, you can always just contact me at Alan Giles, that is Alan, A-L-A-N dot G-I-L-E-S, at health, H-E-A-L-T-H dot N-S-W dot gov dot A-U. And thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.